we should be seeking to actually ensure that higher paid jobs go to British people. And the purpose of, of immigration is to, or migration, is to satisfy the requirements of lower paid jobs that British citizens increasingly don't wish to do. And the, the government is confused about what model it is endeavouring to, to follow here, because in some respects, it's uh, the cleverly proposals will add to the difficulties of UK citizens. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust, and I'm joined today by the chairman of the Federal Trust, John Stevens. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, migration, uh, principally legal economic migration, which has been much in the news re recently. Uh, net migration to the United Kingdom uh, has gone up uh, significantly in recent years, and that's something which has caused great perturbation within the ranks of the Conservative Party. Uh, John, can you tell us why you think net migration has gone up so significantly in recent years? Uh, is it possibly something to do with Brexit? Is it possible that freedom of movement uh, for all the uh, criticism it att attracted during the referendum in 2016 was actually a, a better and a, a better ordered system for dealing uh, with movement, economic movement with, within Europe? Well, I think one needs to start with the overall context of this, which is that Western economies in general have become uh, increasingly dependent on cheap labour. And this has been a result of a number of things, uh, not least the financial repression that we've had since the global financial crisis, that has meant that the need to maintain profit margins has dictated a policy of uh, keeping wages low relative to the rewards going to capital, in essence. But Britain has had a particular problem in this, because by leaving the European Union, it has substituted what was essentially a migration, a mobility of labour policy within the EU that allowed reciprocity, that allowed also British uh, citizens to go and work on the continent uh, with a policy that is uh, really increasingly dependent on bringing in uh, labour from underdeveloped countries, former Commonwealth countries principally. And the effect of Brexit was to essentially send home uh, the EU citizens and replace them with those from the Commonwealth. Well, and will the cleverly proposals make uh, any difference to this? Well, not really, um, because what underlies this is a, a lack of investment. And as I say, this is not just a British problem, but a lack of investment in domestic education and a lack of investment in health provision, which has meant that there has been particular dependency on foreign students to support our higher education system. Uh, and that has led to a, a preference essentially for uh, having uh, foreign students over domestic students because they pay more, the foreign students pay more. And this has uh, exacerbated the underlying problem of a lack of skilled labor in certain sectors, such as doctors, for example, in the UK. And it is also um, a, a feature of lack of investment in the health service, which has created a dependence on imported cheap labor, particularly in the care sector. And uh, uh, Cleverly's uh, proposals are essentially a, a rather confused response to this because he is targeting uh, bringing in dependence um, by both cheap uh, labour coming in for the care and health sectors, and for students. But at the same time, he is raising the threshold for uh, general uh, immigration on of so-called skills labour by raising the threshold of, of the salaries that, that um, are eligible for people who wish to come and work here. You get um, the impression that the thing has been cobbled together in great haste. Um, is that because of pressure from the Conservative backbenchers? Well, yes, certainly. But I think that this is a, uh, an enormous failure of um, 
of policy, because the, the point about uh, freedom of movement was that it, as I say, it wasn't an immigration policy. On the whole, people came uh, for a period, the average was actually about five years, um, and then went home. And also people who came here to work uh, from Poland or uh, Romania or Bulgaria, for example, um, did not on the whole bring their dependents because they could go back very easily and see their dependents. And um, it was a totally different culture. They were coming to work and then go home. Whereas what is uh, being substituted um, for that is uh, a policy where there is a very high chance that people who come here will end up settling here. Uh, and that imposes a totally different set of, of issues in immigration policy, because it, it is fundamentally changing the long term structure of the UK population. Seems to me that we're looking again at the unplanned for consequences of Brexit. Um, is Are the cleverly proposals better than the present situation, the first run of the government at uh, a post-Brexit migration policy, or do they actually make things worse? They, they don't address the problem that our higher education system, particularly uh, courses that are strategically quite significant, like um, technology, um, higher mathematics, um, com uh, computer science. Um, these are courses now which are increasingly difficult for UK citizens to access because of the dependency that so many university departments now have on foreign, principally Chinese and Indian uh, students coming in uh, to take those courses. And so this is a, a feature of a fundamental underinvestment in education, which that's the, the issue. And that raises goes on to the, the point that I was discussing earlier, that we should be seeking to actually ensure that higher paid jobs go to British people. And the purpose of, of immigration is to, or migration, is to satisfy the requirements of lower paid jobs that British citizens increasingly don't wish to do. And the, the government is has been is confused about what model it is endeavoring to, to follow here, because in some respects, it's uh, the Cleverly proposals will add to the difficulties of UK citizens accessing um, higher education uh, courses in, in some areas. Um, and I, I think the, the, the crucial issue is whether um, we are focusing on the requirements of the economy, which uh, essentially uh, uh, requires workers to come here, but then not stay. And that is what the freedom of movement system allowed. Um, what, what the government has done is create a system which is exacerbating the problems in uh, the higher education sector and also in the care, in the care and health sector. The lack of investment there is, is the problem. One and of the address that by, by also raising the minimum wage, which they've done. Um, but that again has not had much effect. And um, they are now looking at means of trying to uh, could force um, British workers to take jobs which they would otherwise not wish to do by uh, uh, addressing the benefit system in some respects. So it's, it's a, a whole range of policies they're playing around with, but failing to understand the fundamental problem that they have substituted a migration policy, um, an, an immigration policy for what was a freedom of movement migration policy. There are hopes, pious hopes sometimes expressed uh, that um, the British market will work um, if there's less competition from overseas uh, workers um, to force up wages for British workers, as if this will happen spontaneously. Um, do you see any chance of that happening without considerable um, further investment in, in training in particular, which um, the government has no has shown no signs of wanting to undertake. Absolutely. That's the prerequisite. That It is a very legitimate policy to try and uh, drive up the rewards going to labour rather than to capital, because you can say that in many respects, the crisis that we are now seeing, not, not just in, in Britain, but in the West in general, has been uh, due to a, uh, a situation prevailing really since... Um, the fall of the Berlin Wall, I mean, of increasing rewards for capital and a squeeze, particularly on middle class incomes and a hollowing out of uh, the Western middle class. 
So, uh, but the way you drive up uh, wages is to increase the qualification of your workforce and the skills of your workforce. And also, obviously, invest in uh, technology that can increase the productivity of the workforce. And this, these are two very glaring uh, failures in, in the UK economy, which is more serious failures than, than those that have prevailed elsewhere. There uh, was some hope expressed when uh, Sunak brought Cameron back into the cabinet that this was a, a, an indication um, of attacking, as you were, towards the centre by his government, perhaps a government that would uh, stress competence over, over ideology. Um, do you think that this marks uh, um, the events of the past few days and the Cleverly proposal uh, mark a retreat from that hope, if, if there ever was a, a realistic hope? But I don't see any competence in this at all. And the notion that bringing back David Cameron is going to enhance the competence level of the, of the government, I find very, um, very bizarre. Very challenging, very challenging. Um, yeah. No, I mean, the, the problem is that we have, uh, uh, we have a problem. We, we have a need for uh, Labour. Um, there's no question about that, as all Western economies do. But the freedom of movement within the EU is a vastly superior system for addressing that um, and does not create a whole range of additional problems. And by abandoning freedom of movement, we have, in fact, put ourselves on a path of changing the longer term structure of the UK population very significantly um, in a whole range of ways. Uh, and we have not, um, we have used this to evade uh, the vitally needed investment in education and, for that matter, in health, but particularly in education. And we are creating a situation where, uh, in some areas, uh, British citizens are being squeezed out of uh, education, higher education, in, in some key sectors. And equally, um, we are creating an incentive for not investing in, for example, significant more uh, um, uh, training for uh, doctors and nurses and and, and care assistants, and but uh, and and that's that's really uh, the path that we have set. And um, in my view, it's a very dangerous one. What's been discussed up till now, both by us and and mostly by by the government, has been um, legal economic migration coming about as a result of government legislation since 2016. Um, the government, and particularly its courtier press, have often been at pains to muddy the waters by confusing questions of uh, refugee status with economic migration. Um, let's talk a little bit about Rwanda, which is to do with refugee status. Uh, James Cleverly has now supposedly um, has signed a treaty with Rwanda um, that he hopes will be able to assuage the concerns uh, of the Supreme Court. Um, how, how likely do you think he, that is um, to be successful in uh, making legal what the Supreme Court pronounced unlegal very recently? Um, well, I'm not sure I'm really qualified to judge that from a legal point of view. I think it, it doesn't seem to uh, likely to work. Um, but the what underlies this is, is a... Uh, a further problem of, of, of Brexit, actually, which is that uh, it is legitimate to, to seek uh, other places to uh, for uh, asylum seekers to, to come to um, within some very tightly defined limits of, of the appropriateness of those locations. I mean, for example, the Italians are considering an arrangement with, with Albania, um, with which they have some historic links. Um, and Albania is is a, a a candidate member for the EU. Um, the, the problem with Rwanda is that it's a it's a very um, uh, baroque location to take anyone to. Um, and the, the the other problem is that, that we have failed to process uh, the uh, asylum seekers coming here in a manner that, that is um, swift and, and effective. I mean, the the average period, I've just come from Germany, the average period for uh, processing asylum seekers in Germany is, is uh, less than two months. Um, the Beyond that, there is the question of, of negotiating arrangements to repatriate um, 
asylum seekers who, 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 whose claims are not valid. And that, again, is something where the EU is beginning to pick up on this, because uh, the immigration issue is one that, it, that is, is going up everywhere. It's a feature in the United States. It's a feature across, across Europe, um, as well as here. Um, but the EU is in a much stronger position to negotiate repatriation terms because of the leverage that it has through, through its trade and its aid programs, which are very significant. Um, we have cut ourselves off from that. Our leverage in negotiating um, with uh, uh, countries that that uh, from from where uh, asylum seekers have been coming um, to, to to send back those whose whose claims are not valid um, is is much is much less uh, and has been rendered much less by leaving the EU. Yeah, uh, the Rwandan government um, said that it didn't think that the treaty which had been signed. Um, significantly changed the existing relationship between the United Kingdom and uh, Rwanda. So I doubt very much whether the Supreme Court are are going to be very impressed by that. Uh, But is this part of a a general attempt by by, by Sunak and by the Conservative Party um, to motivate its shrinking base um, to show that uh, we we can be uh, tough on um, uh, refugee seekers, most of whom aren't really refugees, they're economic migrants. Um, is that going to be a feature of our politics over the next year, do you think, of, um, of, of pointing out or competing to see uh, who can be more beastly to, to, to refugees, to asylum seekers? Well, well, it's certainly true that the whole uh, refugee issue has been um, played up in order to disguise or to divert attention from the real issue, which is the enormous rise in, in legal migration, uh, legal immigration. Um, and uh, that, uh, but this politicization, I think, is beginning to backfire because now the focus is at, uh, turning to uh, the legal uh, immigration figures and the longer term implications of the structure that has now been set in place. Um, and the confusions that have arisen that we we've discussed, um, the conflicts in policy that have arisen, but um, yes, I think you know, identity politics is is here to stay. It's a feature in the United States. It's it's a feature across uh, across Europe, um, and at some point, the, these problems are also going to land on on the uh, on the Labour Party's desk. Um, um, when, as we uh, seems very likely, they they enter government, but I think uh, the the conservatives are are toying with the idea of fighting an election on these issues, but they have one problem, which is the whether reform uh, steals their clothes and mm-hmm. is able to uh, benefit from this change of focus. Now, conservative strategies seem quite relaxed about this because they believe that the sort of people who are going to vote for reform um, say they're going to vote for reform now and the the pin impulse suggests that reform support is rising are people who are basically conservatives and when it comes to an election uh, under our uh, first past the post system they they won't want a Labour government and so they will still stay loyal so they will they will listen to to Tice and his his friends um, but they won't at the end of the day punish the Conservatives. But I think that is missing one feature, which is the very high likelihood, which we've also seen in some by-elections, of Conservative abstention simply because of this issue. And if uh, a significant portion of 2019 Conservative voters don't um, just don't vote, uh, I mean, that has the same effect as, as their voting for reform. Um, so I, I think this is a dangerous strategy, but it is it does seem to be the one that um, is currently in favour, despite Cameron being brought back to supposedly uh, produce a, a friendlier face of conservatism, uh, old style conservatism, pre Brexit conservatism, to the blue wall in the southeast of England that is more liberal on, on these matters. Um, but I, I think that the more immigration goes up the agenda, the more fundamentally problematic it is for the Conservative Party and the more likely it makes a a very crushing defeat. But as I say, this is an issue that is not going away. And when there is a Labour government, it will be for the Labour Party to sort out. And it could be very destructive for them too. Finally, um, do you think the Conservative Party will 
leave the European Convention on Human Rights or may it be committed to it in its manifesto? I don't think they will be able to leave the Convention of Human Rights uh, um, before the next general election. Uh, and I don't think they'll be in government after that. Um, I think it is highly likely that a post-general election um, uh, Conservative Party uh, a place is leaving the convention as, as one of its its platforms, but it'll be, uh, in my view, uh, not the most extreme. Um, and but I don't think actually they will put it in their manifesto no. because I think that both cleverly and Cameron now are um, are fairly committed not to do that and understand the problems that could arise from saying that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting, as always. Um, leave you with one final thought. Um, the idea that uh, you need to earn £30,000 uh, in the United Kingdom in order to bring your foreign spouse um, back to the United Kingdom um, may not be compatible, it seems to me, with the European Convention on Human Rights, with its commitment to the right of respect for family life. I haven't seen that mentioned in any of the media yet. Uh, you heard it here first on the Federal Trust. That's absolutely right. Thanks very much, and thank you all for listening. I hope you'll uh, go to the Federal Trust website and see a number of, of similar discussions which are which are similarly interesting. Thank you very much.